Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box and I'm here today with another episode of Witch Booktube. And today, even though last week, if you were with me last week, I was talking about how I was about to do a whole marathon week after week after week on every single book that Lucy H. Pierce has written. I'm not actually doing that today because I took a little bit of a detour, even though I'm still reading a couple of Lucy H. Pierce's books, to another author that she actually has published through her own publishing house, Lucy's publishing house. And it's this book. It's Yoga for Witches by Sarah Robinson. If you notice, the artwork is gorgeous. I have this book and another book by Sarah Robinson in my to-be-read pile, and I grabbed this. And the artwork is stunning, just like this, the artwork on the two Lucy H. Pierce's books that I read in the last few weeks. Stunning artwork. All three of these books are published by Women Craft Publishing that's owned by Lucy Pierce, so there's that. So I took a little bit of a detour. Even though I'm still reading what Lucy's writing on, in other books, this book I read pretty quickly and I thought I'm just hop on here and do a quick review and we'll talk about it. So before I go into the book, let me read to you Sarah's bio. Sarah Robinson is a yoga and meditation teacher based in Bath, UK. Her background is in science. She holds an MSc in psychology and neuroscience and has studied at Bath, Exeter, and Harvard universities. So there's that. Um, this book is interesting. I picked it up because I love yoga. I love witchery. And it's not a topic that I hear written about or see written about or hear people talking about in conjunction with each other often. But it's a topic that's sort of been up for me because the topic of being embodied has been up in various articles. There's a couple books out on embodiment. And so I wanted to read this book just to see how these two things were married together. And I really enjoyed the book. Here's what I want to say. This book is an example. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago in my little vlog. This book is an example of a book that I wouldn't necessarily give a five star. I wouldn't rave about this book in terms of, oh my God, you have to have this book with some caveats. The reason for it is this, that when Sarah speaks to witchcraft and what witchcraft is, it is definitely very, very beginner. And to some degree, so is what she speaks to in terms of yoga. But when she puts these two things together, the way she speaks of both things, I think that it's important to read for that reason if yoga is something that you're interested in. So let me back up a little bit and read to you the table of contents and then we're going to go into a little bit more detail. She's divided the book into two sections, but it really feels like it's just really one section. And in that section, which is called opening, you've got in search of magic, energy magic, grounding, meditation magic, magic on the mat, magic words, daily magic, animal magic, sun magic, earth magic, ritual and celebration, and spreading the magic. And there's a closing, there's an appendix, there's glossary, there's reading lists, there's acknowledgments, and the about the author. This book doesn't have an index either. It doesn't really matter in terms of the review for the book, but I'm still on an index kick. So there you go. I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed the conversation of the topic of both of these things together because it's part of what my life has been. And so it's okay for me that what she covered in terms of witchery seemed very 101 and basic because what was more important to me was the topic of the body as a magical instrument, the body as a place for witchcraft practice. We don't talk about this, you know, so much of our magic is so cerebral or out externally. There is something so very powerful about yoga because it is a constant beautiful ritual of presencing, of grounding, of honing your intuitive muscle while you're honing your own body that we don't talk about enough. And we don't talk about what it is to maintain embodiment and movement is that thing, right? She then goes into, for those of you who are witches but aren't really familiar with Ayurveda, aren't really familiar with the practice of yoga, she gives you a lot of information about mantra work, about the poses, about how to pair energetic correspondences with different yoga poses for different things, which is so, so helpful. I loved it for that reason. I loved it because it also reminds me so much of how much yoga has given me. So here's the thing. Our body is an instrument for magic. And so much of the time we walk around so utterly disconnected from our body. We hate our bodies. We have body dysmorphia issues. We do everything we can to live above the neck, ignoring the fact that the body is such a beautiful, magical, majestic instrument for all of who you are, because there's no separation. 
We're a whole being. I'm on a kick about this. So you know that I just got off of an IG live on that live. I talked about this a little bit as well. Last Monday, I talked about it in the book review. Like I'm on a thing. I'm on a thing. We need to start really working towards seeing ourselves, treating ourselves, communicating with ourselves and connecting with ourselves as a whole being. The body is a gorgeous, powerful part of you. Yoga is a beautiful practice that yes, has countless physical benefits to your health. Yes, absolutely. But one of the beautiful things about yoga is that it necessarily has you turning inward to what your body process is happening. It necessarily brings you into presence with sensation, with the way energy moves or isn't moving in your body. These are important skills and important awarenesses to have as witches because we run and work with energy. And the body is a beautiful instrument for detecting that, for understanding that, for wielding that. But also when we are aware of how our body is moving and not moving, we can also tap into, I have stuck energy in very specific parts of my body. How do I address that? Yoga is a powerful, beautiful tool for that. It also necessarily creates in you a growing skill towards stillness, towards presence, towards internal listening, which absolutely apply to your witchery. So that she brought these two things together this way, I think is so beautiful and necessary and important. Because of that, the fact that the witchery in the beginning that she talks about was very 101 was okay because I understood, and she spoke a little bit about this in the introduction, I understood that she's also speaking to a yoga community that may not necessarily understand witchcraft. So she's speaking to two communities in in a lot of ways. And so there was a necessity there for let's give some basics because that way everyone is kind of working on a basic understanding of what these things are. Then for those of you who are witches and who don't have any working knowledge of Ayurveda or the healing practices of Hinduism and yoga, she speaks to those things. She identifies what is a mantra, what is a yantra, what are mudras ways of using particular postures that create energetic streams so that you can manifest different states of being or manifest in your life. This is really important information. She also speaks very early on in the very beginning of the awareness that she holds that she's a white Western woman speaking of an Eastern practice, a practice of not of her tradition, but she is not only a student, but she's also an instructor and she's been empowered to teach this. So she speaks to the sensitivity around that and what that entails and what that should require from all of us in terms of being respectful really beautiful. There's deity work in here. There's obviously physical work. There's postures, there's mantras. I want to just really quickly, there's just beautiful, some beautiful design in here. It's, it's not extensive, but you know, when I appreciate it, I got to share it. There are exercises in here and both physical, but also, I guess we could call it mental. She goes into so much of the energy systems in the body. So it's an instance in which I love it for what it's done. I love the marrying of these two things. I love that it brings into the conversation the idea of body as a magical instrument. But also because on some level, I feel the need to really highly recommend and push as much as possible finding your own yoga practice because there's something so powerful about yoga that's different than running. Although running, any physical activity that you do sustainably over time on a regular basis is a powerful energetic tool. It's not just about your healing and your health, although yes, that is incredibly important, but it's not just about that. Energetically, what it does is it creates a continuous flow that keeps you tapped in. It keeps you connected. It keeps you embodied. It keeps you grounded. There are so many beneficial applications magically and spiritually for moving the body. I share this story often. I don't know that I've actually shared this story with the Witch's Box community, although maybe some of you have heard the story because I talk about this so much. It was one of the most beautiful rituals of my life. I really believe certainly there are like great teachers and not great teachers out there. But for the most part, I would say 90% of the teachers that I've ever attended, the, t- the classes that they lead you through are all like rituals. They are a complete, beautiful ritual of stillness, of meditative contemplation, of tuning in and attending to your body. So I say that to preface the story that I'm going to share, which is this. Early on in my relationship with my husband, we were dating. He was at the time doing yoga pretty frequently. And he invited me kind of as a date to go to a particular yoga class with him. And she taught yin yoga. Yin yoga is a much slower practice where you really surrender into a long 
posture of stretching. You don't do, you just hang there. You surrender into the stretch. It's not, it's a little, it's a different orientation, but it's also a very powerful and beautiful yoga practice. It's a very slow thing. So in a class of maybe 90 minutes, you might only do about five postures. Like it's, you linger in a pose for a very, very, very long time. So I walk into this beautiful studio. It's like like a typical yoga studio with nothing going on, but mats in a corner and like a mat in the front where the teacher was going to be teaching. And that's it. I'm sure that most of you have seen, if you haven't been to a yoga class, you've seen what a studio would look like on TV, right? The teacher had her platform in the front and then next to her, because she had a friend who played in the Orange County Orchestra, he played there and he played the cello. So she would invite him to these classes whenever he was free. He had a seat and he had a cello and then all around the perimeter of the yoga studio were just tea-like candles we didn't have any lights it was just the tea light him and her and it was pretty dusky dark in there except for the lights around the corner and the beautiful glow it was for me one of the most beautiful rituals of release that I think I've ever had to this day this was 15 years ago but we went through each posture in such a beautiful slow and intentioned way and it was physical work there are parts of my body that tend to be tighter than others because I hold trauma there or I hold tension there for a variety of reasons and so there is always this physical component to doing yoga but the music he played this beautiful music in the background that reverberated softly on the wooden floor while we we're all on our mats doing these beautiful postures that are not necessarily easy you have to breathe you have to stay in your body to really keep relaxing into the posture continuously returning to presence there is magic there there's healing there there's so much power there and the amount of emotional release was incredible. It was one of the most, to, to date, I still talk about it 15 years later, how many yoga classes have I taken in my life? Countless. It was beautiful. And I feel that way about yoga in general. It's a ritual. It's a ritual of returning back to the practice of presence, the practice of being in bodied in your body because you think that you're doing physical exertion and yes you are but you're also moving energy you're also touching into parts of you that hold energy that run specific types of energy you touch into parts of yourself that have wisdom that's beyond the mind right because the mind is not just in the brain it's everywhere we understand our world and we interpret our world through the whole of our bodies and we're so disconnected from the whole of our bodies that a practice like this is so powerful and so healing and so beautiful so all of that to say that this feels like the beginning of a really amazing conversation if she chooses to continue with it she may not i, I don't know that that's her intention but I love that the two things have been brought together just even for the inquiry of huh what would it be like to bring my magic to the mat I think Every time I've gone to the yoga mat, it's always been a ritual. It's always been an act of magic. It's always been an act of healing and release. And so much more than I'm going to get flexible. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to do cardio. It's so much more than that. And so she brings that orientation to the book. I loved it. It's beautiful. If you're a witch, chances are that you are if you're watching this channel and you've got the basics. You know that I don't really want to cover the basics here because the basics are everywhere. Know that you're going to hit the basics here and it's going to be probably a little too basic for you, but that's okay because the rest of the book is the introduction into the spiritual orientation around yoga, which I think can be such a beautiful tool for every single witch. So it may not be for you. So this is not necessarily a book for everybody, but in that sense, I so appreciate this book. I also can't not get enough of this cover. Holy cow. Look at how beautiful this is. Because of Goodreads, I still have in my head the whole five star system. And the five star is like the thing that I say that, oh my God, you have to read this. This is like a really amazing book. Like the Lucy Pierce books are five stars. I mean, they're just, it's a have to. The three books that I've ever read by Dan, or that she's actually ever written by Danielle Dolsky are all five star because holy cow, oh my God. And I've talked about the star rating system that I use sort of here in one of the other vloggy videos that I've done for book two. This is not a five star. I don't know that I'd give it a four. I would give it like a 3.5, maybe almost a four. Like I'm kind of in this weird thing, but don't let that say anything to you. It's only because this is not necessarily for everyone. If you're really allergic to, oh my God, I cannot read another 101, anything about witchcraft again, then you're going to have to get past that because what then comes after, I think, is what where the juice is for this book. And for me, the juice is combining these two beautiful practices. We need to get back into our bodies. We need to get into right relationship with our bodies. And when I say right relationship, I don't want it to sound like 
uh, rigid, I mean embracing and being in the flow with and being in the dance with our bodies where we're not in a constant state of rejection or resistance or denial. Yoga is a beautiful, powerful tool for that. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know what else I could say. I loved it. I really loved it. The other book that I have of hers is on yin yoga, and I haven't touched it yet. I will be reading it for sure. You will be definitely hearing about it. Not every yoga studio will offer yin yoga. However, because I also recognize that yoga can be expensive, there are a ton of yoga teachers doing free yoga videos on YouTube. So do a search. I would really want for all of you to experience yin yoga. You're going to have all sorts of things come up for you. There's going to be resistance. There's going to be aggravation. It moves stuck energy. I have had some of my most powerful emotional releases on the yoga mat. You're going to find sometimes that there are very particular poses that will trigger your shit over and over and over again. And it's a testament to how much we hold in our bodies, how much our bodies record everything that goes on with us. We cannot discount and separate ourselves from the body. The body needs to be embraced fully because it's who you are. It's part of you. Oh my God, I could talk about yoga forever, but there it is. Yoga for Witches by Sarah Robinson. Grab it if you're interested in yoga. Grab it if you're interested in embodiment. I really, 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 really love that part of it. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful marriage. So there you go. And I will see you next week. Bye.